Good morning. It's Wednesday, May the 13th, and welcome to another day of Locked Down with Pastor Ronnie. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I've had a couple of people say, I wish you'd have called it that. Uh, otherwise, it's, otherwise, this is first light. Well, I spent all my time in Proverbs yesterday as it tied into the book of Hebrews. So today, I wanted to look at the uh, Psalm 102, which is the um, the first half of the week psalm, Psalm 102. And I want to look at the whole psalm. Uh, the lectionary reading only goes about halfway through, and there's so much that it doesn't cover. I looked ahead on the lectionary, and it doesn't look like we're going to be hitting the rest of the psalm anytime soon. So, um, you're locked down with me, so I'm going to read the whole thing. Psalm 102. And friends, I know I'm being a little bit lighthearted here, but this is actually a very serious psalm that raises some uh, some challenging, challenging topics. And you'll see as we go through. Oh, uh, verse one. Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry for help come before you. So we've already set the tone. This psalm is from someone crying out for help from God. Verse 2, do not hide your face from me in my day of trouble. Listen closely to me. Answer me quickly when I call. So we're dealing with someone who is in trouble. It's a day of trouble. They, uh, they're crying out for help, and they need God to come and answer quickly. And the next several verses are powerful, partially because they're so vivid, but also because um, it shows one reason why people like the Psalms. The Psalms in the Bible give voice to many emotions that are a part of our human lives sometimes. And so listen to the following. My days vanish like smoke. And my bones burn like a furnace. Now, the first part of that seems to be a, a recognition that uh, I won't live forever. There are many passages in the Bible that talk about um, our life is like a vapor. Our life is like weeds here and then gone. But the second part may indicate some kind of pain or suffering. My bones burn like a furnace. So friends, if you're if you have ever known someone or if you yourself deal with chronic pain, you understand something of the difficulty and the challenges that come with that. Verse 4. My heart is suffering. So not only is it a not only are we affected by our physical bodies obviously, but chronic debilitating problems begin to wear on your spirit. I mean, they do. My heart is suffering, withered like grass. My heart is drying up. I even forget to eat my food because of the sound of my groaning. My flesh sticks to my bones. Friends, as, I, as I'm reading through this, the pastor part of me is looking at this and I'm thinking, you know, this sounds like someone who is in some kind of depression. I mean, this is, this is a clinical depression is the terminology we would use today. Um, heart is suffering, chronic pain, heart is suffering, my heart is withered like grass, not eating, my flesh sticks to my bones, so this has been going on a while. Apparently lost some weight. I'm like an eagle owl, a little owl among the ruins. So the Hebrew translation is difficult to, when you're dealing with certain species, certain rocks and minerals. Sometimes it's hard to know what they're talking about. A little bit gets lost in the translation. But overall, this appears to be 
an owl or some kind of bird of prey that hangs around lowly, desolate places, not like a sparrow or a pigeon that you would find in a crowded place with a bunch of humans. This is this is a this is an an owl, some kind of bird that is off, and I think that's the point here. It's it's poetic words to describe isolation, isolated. Verse seven, I stay awake. So either insomnia or lack of regulated sleep. Any of you that have dealt with this, you're recognizing these words. These are powerful descriptions. Verse 8, my enemies taunt me all day long. They ridicule and use my name as a curse. Wow, that's awful. Um, the only person I know whose name is used as a curse is Jesus. But I couldn't imagine if the name Ronnie somehow became a curse. That is that is an amazing thought. Um, verse 9, I eat ashes like bread or as bread. So uh, many times when people were grieving and crying out, they would put ashes on their heads. And obviously that might drip down into your food and into your mouth. Um, and then the next half of verse 9 is vivid as well. And I mingle my drinks with tears, literally weeping, weeping. Verse 10, because of your indignation and wrath. So whether it's accurate or not, the person perceives that maybe God is punishing them or is against them. And those are not rare thoughts that enter people's minds as well. You have picked me up and thrown me aside. And so those words also once again capture something that I've heard many times. It is common for people who are struggling like this uh, to say things like, where is God? I can't find God. God just feels far off. And that's the feeling that this person is expressing. And of course, it's important to recognize when you're in moments like this, this is where theology and faith come into play because in moments like this, you cannot allow yourself to be merely ruled by how you feel. For example, with reference to the presence of God, it's true. The presence of God at times can be felt. I felt it. But we got to be cautious about flipping that around and saying just because I don't feel God close, therefore he's not. Friends, that's making a leap that goes beyond. These are times when our faith, we have to do what's also in the Psalms. We have to talk to our souls and tell our souls truth. And in this regard, in verse 10, the truth is, that assuming that I am not living in flat out rebellion against God, this isn't some, some kind of discipline of God. So I'm not experiencing the tragedy of my own horrible choices, assuming that's not happening. Okay. Assuming this is a sickness or some, something has happened. And now I just feel like God has left me all alone. When that happens, friends, that's where truth needs to be spoken to our hearts. Faith needs to rise up. And we need to remind ourselves that Jesus' name is Emmanuel, which means God with us. And Jesus' last words on this earth in the book of Matthew was, And lo, I will be with you even to the end of the age. And then Paul said, What can separate us from the love of God? Not sickness, not death. So I'm, I'm not saying that when you're in a hole like this, that it's easy to get out of, but I am suggesting a couple of things. You've got to, you cannot allow your thinking to get twisted and wrong. That's where, that's where doctrine and right belief and Bible study matters. Because friends, if you don't have a good biblical foundation, when you get to this point, you're in trouble. I mean, serious trouble because you have you have nothing to stand on, theologically speaking. But if you've sought the Lord 
in better times, if you've spent time in the Word of God, underlining and learning and growing, then when moments like this happen, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. It's going to be horrible. But, but, thank God for the buts. God's going to be able to speak to you and minister to you in ways that were not possible when you did not have a spiritual foundation at all. Then in verse 11, my days are like a lengthening shadow and I wither away like grass. So, so this is not merely just my heart is withering. I myself am withering. Some of you can relate to verses 1 through 11. Verse 12 says, But. But. Everything that I have felt in verse 1 through 11 has been a true feeling. I'm not lying. I'm not making it up. Suffering is real. I am not eating right. I'm not sleeping right. I'm isolated. Um, I'm doing all these things that are actually not good for my mental health. I remember um, I've been not quite like this, but friends, I myself have been through a challenging time. Those of you that listened to my concert heard one of the songs that, that I wrote during that time period. And thank God for the foundation that was in my life at the time. Because I remember my pastor preaching a sermon on Elijah when he was running away from Queen Jezebel. And you read those verses in the book of Kings and you're, it sounds like he's in some kind of depression. I mean, it's awful. Uh, this is a prophet of God. And I remember my pastor teaching, I was only a teenager, a, a 19, 18, 19 year old, and he recommended a couple of things. When you're in a situation like that, you need to, first of all, you've got to eat something. You gotta try to get a hold of your appetite because if you're not getting some nourishment, it's only gonna make not only your energy level go bottom out, but the chemicals in your brain and in the rest of your body, blood sugar and everything else, is just going to get all out of whack. So even if you don't feel like eating, you need to have in your mind, I need to eat something. And I did that. Then um, I also can relate to this. Getting all out of whack with sleep. And so it's not helpful to stay up till 3 and 4 in the morning and then you got to get up and try to be productive. And that lack of sleep just creates a further spiral that goes down and down and down. So you got to find a way to, to not watch those awful infomercials at 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, and then, remember these words that I read to you about this owl out in the... you got to not isolate. And so I knew, I knew that I needed to avoid the desire and the tendency to isolate myself. I needed other people in my life. And so um, I did a couple of things about it. First of all, I told um, one of my accountability persons, I said, look, I'm going through the struggle and I, and I want you to know it and, and I appreciate any feedback you have. And then um, uh, a man, one of my Christian brothers who was, a, who was about my age, um, I told him, and I was in graduate school at the time when this was going on. And his name is Todd. And Todd made a covenant with me. Uh, Todd made a covenant with me in a, in a dorm situation um, that he would come by my room every evening and pray with me. Now, obviously, in a, in a, a situation outside of a dorm, that would be a little bit hard. But in that setting, he made a covenant with me that I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you. I'm going to walk through this with you. And, um, and I'm honest with you. At first, I, he did the praying. I didn't do much praying at first. Um, 
but that praying would not have happened if I had not made a conscious decision not to isolate myself, to be connected to the body of Christ, to be honest with uh, another brother in the Lord whom I could trust and who would love me in a difficult time. And so I'm thankful for that, friends. So I have been through something like this, and I know some of you have as well. And you have to always find a way, even in the midst of difficulties, to get to verse 12. If you stay stuck in verse 1 through 11, you're in trouble, friends. You're, don't allow your emotions to completely run your life. This is where truth has to be spoken. And you got to get to the but. Verse 12, but you, Lord, are enthroned forever. So here is a person in the midst of what appears to me, I, I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist, I'm just a pastor with a little bit of experience dealing with people. It sounds, verse 1 through 11, sounds like some kind of depression to me. It's a spiritual, emotional hole. But in the midst of this, the person is declaring the truth and the praise of Almighty God. But you, O oh Lord, in, read between the lines. In spite of what I'm going through, you're still king. Those are powerful words, friends. Your fame endures to all generations. So I'm going to, even I may not feel like it, I am going to praise you. And friends, that was another thing that I did in my life. I didn't skip church, even if I didn't feel like it. So I ate right, I tried, or a little bit, I tried. I tried to sleep right, I, I didn't isolate myself, I tried to uh, get connected with the body of Christ, and worship had to be a part of my life, even if I didn't feel like it. And then verse 13, you will rise up and have compassion for Zion. That's Zion is oftentimes just the people of God. For it is time to show favor to her. And the next couple of words lead me to believe that this psalm may have been written during the Babylonian captivity. I tried to do a little research and, and, um, and had a hard time. We may not know exactly when it was written, but listen to the next several verses and you'll see what I mean. So it, it is time for you, God, to show favor to her, Zion, your people. The appointed time has come for your servants take delight in its stones and favor its dust. Now, I don't want to just try to read only what I think into the scripture, but to me, this sounds like in the Babylonian captivity, when that when the Babylonian army and the Assyrian army came in, they laid the place waste, Israel waste. And so there's a lot of stones and dust from all the destruction. And when they come back in the days of Jeremiah, they've got to clean the rubble out. And so what I'm hearing, if I'm interpreting this correctly in verse 14, we are slaves in Babylon and we miss the rocks of our poem. We miss its, we favor its dust. And being locked out of worshiping in our wonderful church, um, we are having a greater appreciation for words like this. I, I, I love the bricks of that place. I, I love the wood. The, and verse 15, then, well, when is the then? The then is when God rises up, has compassion on Zion, his people, and shows his favor to her. Then, when that happens, the nations will fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth your glory. For the Lord, say so here's another word, will rebuild Zion. This just sounds like the Babylonian captivity to me. He will appear in glory. 
He will pay attention to the prayer of the destitute and will not despise the prayer. Well, that is where our lectionary reading stopped, but there's some good stuff ahead, so let's keep going a little bit. This will be written for a later generation, and a people who have not yet been created will praise the Lord. So this person who is in horrible suffering, who is also <clears throat> probably in Babylon, in slavery, suffering and slavery, uh, in a hole spiritually depressed, he's able to understand that he's writing something that's going to be a blessing to people who aren't even born yet. A people who have not even yet been created will praise the Lord. Friends, that's you. That's you. You are in verse 18. He looked down from his holy heights. That's God. The Lord gazed out from heaven to earth to hear a prisoner's groaning to set free those condemned to die so that they might declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. So see, it sounds like they're not in Jerusalem. Um, when peoples and kingdoms are assembled to serve the Lord. He has, God has broken my strength in mid-course and shortened my days. That is, um, you know, I, I feel like I'm not going to live out a full life. <clears throat> I'm not going to make it. I say, verse 24, my God, do not take me in the middle of my life. Your years, you see the shift? So he's gone back to making a few comments about himself. And he says, I feel like my years are being cut short. And then there is a spiritual but here. He doesn't say but, but psychologically it's here. The but is, but God, your years continue through all generations. Long ago, you established the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. God, you created everything. I love verse 26. They, the earth and the heavens, will perish. I read the end of the book. I read Peter. I read Revelation. I've read the prophets. And there's a consistent message that this creation will be destroyed one day. It will perish. By the way, even if you're not a spiritual person, the law of entropy says the same thing, that chaos, that creation itself winds down. Of course, atheistic science says it's going to take several hundred billions and trillions of years for that to happen. We think it'll be a whole lot shorter, but the end result is the same. Creation does not last forever. It is not eternal. So the heavens and the earth will perish, but, there's the but again, you will endure, God, you will endure. All of them, the earth and the heavens are going to wear out like an old garment. And they're going to pass away. But you are the same, God, and your years will never end. Your servant's children will dwell securely and their offspring will be established before you. I think what verse 28, especially if this is in the Babylonian captivity, he's expressing a hope that God, you are going to rise up. You're going to touch your people and my descendants, my children and my descendants are going to be blessed by you and I believe it and I declare it. So friends, here's a guy in a spiritual hole and he's hanging on to the butt. He's hanging on to the butt. I feel this way, but God, you are an awesome God. My trust is in you. And I can't help but think that if this really is in the Babylonian captivity, what you are reading in Psalm 102 is a fulfillment 
of what God spoke through the prophet Jeremiah in chapter 29, when in the midst of sending his people off into Babylon, God said, after 70 years of captivity, you will seek me and you will find me with all your heart. And so we may be witnessing the fulfillment of a prophecy of someone who is in a hard, bad situation away from his homeland, but yet is also suffering horribly, but yet is willing to seek God and call upon him. Friends, it's a perfect picture for God's grace and mercy meeting us in a tough time. God is great. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Let's pray together and let's declare it. Lord, I, I, uh, I have seen firsthand in my own life, but also people that I'm running into, um, this lockdown that people are experiencing in different ways, um, this is wearing on people and, and it's, 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 it's touching our spirits. And Lord, I, I'm praying that something from your word today and something that maybe I've shared from my heart would touch people's lives in such a way that they would begin to realize, wait a second, wait a second, I, I'm not helpless. Uh, there are some things that I can begin to do and can begin to change in my life as I call out to God. And I'm thankful, Lord, that we can begin to live by faith and not feelings. Our feelings don't go away, but faith has a way of overruling those feelings. And so we declare your love for us. We declare your presence with us because you're the one that declared it. We agree with what you said. Lord, we declare that your mercy was renewed today. It hasn't run out. Lord, we declare that we will not be overcome, but we will survive and thrive in your mercy and your love. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you're a God who hears when people call out to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well. Jesus. Stay close to him. Stay close to the body of Christ and walk in the spirit. Amen.